In this video, I'm going to consider the square root of minus 1 and how the math module in Python deals with the attempt to take the square root of minus 1. This is something we've considered earlier in the playlist, x squared equals 1, and how we find the value of x that would satisfy this. In the last video, we factorised to find the solution. In this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I'm going to get the square root of x squared, and that's going to equal, and of course, I have to take the square root of the other side, which is obviously, in this case, the square root of 1. Now, from previous work in this playlist, we know that the square root of x squared, in fact, will be x. And we should know that the square root of 1 is in fact going to be 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. And of course we can end up by saying that x is equal to 1. Now consider what this arrow is pointing to, and you can see it's pointing in front of the 1. And at the moment there is no sign there. And when there is no sign, it implies that it is plus 1. So to emphasise that fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show this again, and you can see here I've just put the plus 1 in. So we've got x squared equals plus 1, and how do we find the value for x for this? Well, it's going to be the same, isn't it? The fact that I've put a plus sign in front of it here is just something you can do in mathematics. If there's no sign there, it means it's plus. So I can go on to say, well, let's take the square root of both sides. So I take the square root of x squared, and I take the square root of 1. And of course, the square root of x squared, we already know, is x. And the square root of plus 1, well, it's going to be plus 1, so the x will equal plus 1. But both of these are essentially the same solution. It's just that here we've decided not to put the plus sign in front of it. Let's see how Python will deal with the square root of 1 and the square root of plus 1 and see what result it will give in both cases. If we consider this computer program, you can see on this line that I'm importing the math module. Now that gives us access to math functions such as the square root. On this line, I'm assigning to x1. So x is now the name bound to the integer object that has the value of 1. On this line, I'm taking the square root of that 1 and the result is being assigned to y. And then here, I'm printing this string out, the value of the x, and the value of the y, which will obviously be the square root of x. So what you will see is this. The value of x is placed here, which is the one that was set up on this line. And of course, the y will be displaying 1.0, which is what this returned to the y. So you can see that it has no trouble finding the square root of 1. Just an aside, you will note that this 1 here is an integer because that's what was set up here, x assigned 1. Whereas here, this is 1.0, telling us that it's a float because when we ask to take the square root of a number, it'll return to y the number number one, which would be of type float. Now consider this computer program here, and you should see it is almost the same, except on this line, I've included the plus sign in front of the one. And when I run this, the output we get, you can see, is identical to what we had here. In other words, what this has done, it's assigned plus one to x. This has taken the square root of plus one and found that the result is indeed one, and it puts the result here as one, and you can see that is a float. So we can see that writing this or this works. Of course, it would be usual in mathematics and in programming to use this approach, x equals 1, and to realise you mean plus 1. Let's now consider this and look here, minus 1. And remember before it was plus 1. And you can see it's minus 1 by the fact that I've put the negative sign here. And we need to find out whether there is a value of x such that when it's squared, it gives us the result of minus 1. In the last video, we tried to factorise only to find that there was no real number solution to this. In other words, I could not find anywhere on the real number line a value of x such that when it was squared would give me minus 1. Now, if you're unsure about what I mean there, I would recommend you go back and look at the previous video in this playlist on complex numbers. 
Now, we already know there is no real number solution, but what I'm going to do nevertheless, I'm going to take the square root of both sides of this. So I end up taking the square root of x squared, and I'm going to make that equal to the square root of minus 1, as you can see here. Now, we know the square root of x squared is going to give us x. Now, the question is, what is the square root of minus 1? Can I find anything? Well, I'm going to say no. I cannot find a real number that gives me the square root of minus 1. So I'm going to say that x equals this something that I cannot find a solution to. In other words, there is no number that when you take the same value of that number and multiply them together, you will get minus 1. Let's take this a step at a time and let's consider this. I know minus 1 times plus 1 is minus 1. Now this is minus 1 and you can see there's minus 1 here. But look at these two and you can see they're different. Minus 1 is different to plus 1. So this does not assist us in finding the square root of minus 1. So neither of those numbers, when multiplied together, can be used to find the square root of minus 1. Because I, what I can do, I can swap these around. I can have plus 1 times minus 1, which is effectively the same. And that equals minus 1, because a plus times a minus is a minus, and when you multiply 1 by 1, you get 1. So these two numbers are no use either. Well, how about considering this? Plus 1 times plus 1. A plus 1 is the same as plus 1, but when they're multiplied together, it gives you plus 1, which is clearly not minus 1. I can go on to look at this. A minus 1 times a minus 1 is plus 1. These are both the same, which is one of the criteria I would need to help me find the square root. But of course, a minus times a minus is a plus, and 1 times 1 is 1, and this plus 1 is not minus 1. So I end up knowing that these two are no use either. Which brings me back to the fact that I cannot find a real number that is the square root of minus 1. So let's see if I can get Python to help. And we'll look at a program and see if it can help us find the square root of minus 1. So here you can see I've imported the math module and on this line I've let x be assigned minus 1. So x is now the name bound to the integer object that has the value of minus 1. On this line I call upon the square root function and I pass in x which of course I've set to minus 1 on this line and this will attempt to find the square root of minus 1 and give that value to y. So let's run this program and see what we get. Well, we get an error. And it's highlighting y equals math dot square root of x. And then it says value error, math domain error, which I'm going to show larger, as you can see here. Now let's think about what has happened. On this line, I have assigned to x minus 1. And minus 1 is of type integer. And I'm passing minus 1 in here, which is of type integer. And this math square root function is saying, I'm afraid I cannot find the square root of minus 1 because it is expecting to return a float, a real number in mathematics. So what this is saying is, well, you've given me a number that I, as this math module, don't know what to do with. So Python says, look, I've got a math domain error here. I can't get you the number, which is the square root of minus 1. Now, what are the key points we need to take from this video? Well, let's have a look at them. There is no real number answer for finding the square root of minus 1. In other words, the square root of minus 1 in normal mathematics, you will not find a real number that satisfies the square root of minus 1. So in Python, if you import the math module and then you attempt to find the square root of minus 1 and then assign the result to y, what Python will do is return this error. It'll say there's a math domain error because the square root function is expecting to return a value that's a float. And of course, a float is one of the ways in which we can represent real numbers in Python. But the key here is Python is unable to find the square root of minus 1. That's a real number. Now, this is not to say that in mathematics and within Python, we don't know what to do with the square root of minus 1. 
we do. It's just that you cannot find a real number that's the square root of minus 1. And this is the key to understanding complex numbers and imaginary numbers which are part of a complex number. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.